Hey, y'all, this is the first few minutes of this week's Thursday This History, History of Mental Health. This is an in-depth look at uh, play therapy, the history of non-directive play therapy, where it came from, how it works, and what it is. So uh, those that are patrons of the uh, Patreon uh, get the whole thing. They get one of these every week. There is a monthly uh, history that drops for everybody in the main feed. That is going to be next week as well. But if you want to hear this one and any of the other uh, deeper dives into history that uh, that get produced weekly on the Thursdays, go to patreon.com slash broken brain or dwighthurst.com slash support. Quick mention that the Broken Brain is highlighting the nonprofit charity Out Nebraska this month. It is a local charity in the state of Nebraska that helps make the state uh, happier, healthier, and safer for LGBTQA plus individuals. They do a lot of good work there from all the research I've uh, done was I picked a charity to highlight this month, and I like to pick local charities whenever I can find one. So if you go to outnebraska.org, you can look at what they're doing and even contribute to that. So uh, please enjoy the first few minutes of this um, information about very, very useful practice of play therapy. The Broken Brain. Just for you and just for me, we're together again for history. <laughs> it's Thursday History. It's Dwight. And this week, I want to talk to you a little bit about the history of play therapy and Specifically, Virginia Axline, who is one of the pioneers of play therapy. Now, what is play therapy, you may ask? And before you even have time to finish asking, I'm going to tell you. Play therapy is a form of therapy that we use with very young children, generally speaking. It can be applied in other areas, and we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But typically speaking, very young entrants to therapy who come in uh, as clients they are not going to be as likely to benefit from sitting down, having big talks about their feelings and things. And so typically speaking with young kids, there are two main approaches. One is more of a psychoeducation skill building approach where you might talk about coping skills, anxiety management skills and skills, skills, skills and work with them, work with the parents. Um, I should say uh, sort of a tangential connection to that when you're doing that kind of education is you really are working more intensively with the parents and the child and not just the child. You got to kind of incorporate both things so that the parents know what they should practice and those type of things because a young child is generally going to struggle with implementing those kinds of things. Now, the other approach is less directive, which is play therapy, the concept of which is to give the child a chance to somewhat verbally, but more internally, emotionally, and mentally process things they've been through, whether it be traumas or fears or anxieties. And play therapy is very, very interesting because the premise of it is that it treats play as a form of language, so that if you aren't of the age of doing a lot of verbal processing, that play will allow you to process, both externally in ways that we will be able to know exactly what the kid was processing, but more often internally, in a way that we may never understand completely what the processing is that's happening. We may only kind of theorize about that. That's important. Foreshadowing. We can't read a child's mind when they're doing this. Foreshadowing to one of the problems in how play therapy is applied. But if a non-directive play therapy is applied appropriately, what we're doing is giving the child space to process. Generally speaking, how will we be able to tell if it's working? If it's working. In other words, if a child is demonstrating a lower amount of anxiety, they're coping better with their environment and things like that. Those become the measures. Interesting piece that's missing that we traditionally would assume is there in therapy is the child is not necessarily telling us, I had an epiphany and then this happened. Because they don't talk that deeply, guys. Most kids have a much higher pitched voice. After all, most of the people who are receiving this type of therapy are between the ages of three and 12. <laughs> that's a uh, Play therapy can be applied to lots of other different uh, ages and different situations. But typically speaking, when we're talking about who, who's going to be a good candidate for play therapy, it's a child that's in that range. Now, when you think of someone who's three, four, five, six years old, you may not think of them as someone who's going to benefit from uh, therapy going in a direct. But this is a way that actually allows for that. One of the problems with play therapy is that it's misunderstood 
both by parents and by clinicians, unfortunately. You have many clinicians who are under-trained, and they may do the play, and in fact, it may even have a benefit, but they aren't necessarily trained in some of the things you actually do. Even though it's a non-directive intervention, there are things that you do to monitor and shape the healing process for the child. I'll get into those, but let me say the other the other thing that is a drawback with parents, sometimes play therapy is either not explained to them, not reported in the right way to them, so that they don't really understand what's going on. And they think all is happening is I'm bringing my kid and having an expensive babysitter to play with them for an hour, okay? Now, the the other time is that, that that is hard with parents is when that's actually all that's happening. Once again, going back to training, am I doing a thing with a kid that is useful and can I explain to the parent what I'm observing, what they're going through, and which things we should track at home? And those are the main ways to work with a parent in non-directive play therapy. There's different stages that uh, the patients should go through as they're going through play therapy.